Welcome back. This is part two of a series of interviews on RBGH, a synthetic hormone called recombinant bovine growth hormone. I'm speaking today with Nicole Killian. My name is Linda Lindquist, and we're both nurses. And um, what I would like to first ask Nicole is, has the ANA, American Nurse Association, taken a stance on recombinant bo bo bovine growth hormone? Yes, Linda. The ANA just recently passed a resolution opposing the use of RBGH, and in this resolution it called for um, supporting the development of local and national laws to decrease the use of RBGH, uh, to support public right-to-know laws on uh, requiring labels of, of dairy products, because right now it's not required uh, for a product to be labeled whether or not it has RBGH, and to eliminate RBGH from the healthcare industry. It has also resolved to educate nurses on the issue of RBGH. Um, and I would also like to mention that the AMA, the American Medical Association president, has also come out opposing the use of RBGH. Ah, that's great. What can nurses specifically do about RBGH? Linda, there is so much that we as nurses can do on this issue of RBGH. Um, the first thing that you can start doing today is to purchase only organic milk or milk produced mm -hmm. without the use of RBGH. Uh, and also other dairy products uh, without the use of RBGH. <clears throat> That's very important for you and your family. You can do that today. Also today, what you can start doing is educating yourself and educating your patients and your mm -hmm. coworkers on what are the issues surrounding the problems uh, for human and animals uh, with the use of RBGH. Um, I'm sure that all of us as nurses have had the experience of a neighbor or a friend coming to us for advice. We're trusted. Mm -hmm. We're trusted health individuals. People really like the advice that we give them. So when we start educating people about RBGH, we really have a captive audience that is going to take our advice very seriously. Mm -hmm. Just getting familiar with the issue, what resources are available for nurses? Healthcare Without Harm, which is an international coalition that is trying to make the healthcare sector as healthy as possible, both for patients and workers, has put together a nurses RBGH free dairy toolkit. Uh, this was a collaborative effort that included nurses um, that is just a fantastic tool for nurses to learn about the issues and then to know what to do about it. Okay. What's in the toolkit? In the toolkit, is there are a lot of things. First, there's a flyer with scientific notations. Um, this flyer is great to bring to nursing meetings because it's a quick snapshot of what are the issues, what can you do about it, and where can you get more information. There is a longer eight-page reference pamphlet that was created by Oregon Physicians for Social Responsibility, and that goes into a little more detail on all the scientific data on the problems of RBGH. There is also a video by Dr. Pompilio on why she is opposed to the use of RBGH. Okay. It would seem like a likely spot for nurses that work in hospitals, especially to be engaging their dietary department. Does this toolkit have any tools available for nurses to engage the dietary department. Yes, it does, Linda. There is a template letter to the Director oh. of Food or Dietary nice. Services uh, requesting that the hospital purchase products without the use oh. of RBGH. And nice. because this is a template, the nurse can just put her name on it and send it as is. It's pre-written. Or she can take the letter and use it as a sample and, and reword it and make it really his or her own letter. Um, there is a purchasing guide which helps hospitals decide um, how to buy milk or other dairy products without RBGH, what kind of questions to ask a dairy farmer. There's a sample letter that a hospital can send to dairies. Um, so this is really for a hospital director, or excuse me, a food services director that is not familiar with these issues. Mm -hmm. This is making it very easy for them um, to be able to make the switch to RBGH free. There's also a food and water watch um, state listing. Food and Water Watch is a different organization, and they have a state-by-state -state listings of dairies that do not use RBGH. So nurses can use this for their own personal consumption so that when you go to the grocery store, you know which brands to look for. Okay. Um, for example, if it's not organic, it will not be labeled. So you would know that this brand has RBGH and this brand doesn't. And then again, you can give this to your food and dietary director so that it makes their job easier to switch to RBGH free. There is a letter from Catholic Healthcare West, which is a large medical system, on their intentions to go RBGH free. And nurses can take this to their hospital administrators to show them that 
hospitals across the country are switching to RBGH free. There's also a position statement by Healthcare Without Harm, which is the organization that put together this toolkit, uh, on why it's urging the healthcare profession to phase out or to help phase out the use of RBGH. And last but not least, Linda, there are postcards. Uh, there are pre-printed postcards to Dan and Yoplait requesting that they stop using RBGH milk for the production of their yogurt. And again, these are great to bring to nursing meetings. They're very easy. All you have to do is sign your name. But when you do sign, make sure that you put registered nurse because it makes a difference to these companies to know that a healthcare professional took the time, was concerned enough to write about this issue and to mail it in. Oh, this is really impressive. You just listed about 10 different things nurses can do to get in engaged around these issues. There's a lot of resources out there. So thanks for sharing that with me. I would like to emphasize again that as nurses, we are trusted conveyors of information. The public trusts us to give them a sound medical opinion. And as nurses, we first do no harm. So I urge all nurses, go to www.noharm.org, click on the link for nurses, and then click on the link for Nurses RBGH Free Dairy Toolkit. And that's where you're going to find all this information that I just talked about. Take some time to educate yourself, read the flyer, read the, the scientific pamphlet, and then start educating your friends, your patients, and your coworkers. As nurses, we um, are in the position to make these changes which are better for our environment, for the health of our children, for the health of our patients, and our communities. These are all great suggestions. Nicole, what are you personally doing now that you know quite a bit about this topic? I do not drink milk or eat any dairy products produced with the use of RPGH. I make sure that I read all my labels, and, and by now I know which brands I can buy and which ones to avoid. And I make sure that my, my baby does not drink any products yeah. that have been made with RBGH. As, as nurses, we know that children are more prone to toxicity because of their smaller size and their higher fat composition. And, and we are in the position to protect them from artificial growth hormones like RBGH. So we need to be getting this message out there to our patients and their families, to our own families, and to our hospitals so that they can make the switch to RBGH-free dairy. Very nice. Thank you for spending the time with me today explaining this important issue about RBGH and what nurses can do and how we can get engaged around this topic. Um, we do want to emphasize the RBGH toolkit. If you go to www.noharm.org and then click on nurses and then click on nurses RBGH toolkit. That would be the RBGH free dairy toolkit. And for more information on the science behind recombinant bovine growth hormone, or RBGH, please listen to part one, and this concludes part two. Thank you very much for listening.